right, peace everybody. So welcome to the Herbalist Lounge. We're so glad that you are here today. All right, so today we are going to talk about allies for allergy defense. Tis the season um, and some people are struggling with allergies. So we're gonna have a good, good conversation about it. We just wanna remind you that while you're here, we are recording, so please just make sure that you mute your mics or your phones or however you're tuning in so we can eliminate the background noise. And now we are actually streaming the or playing the recording of the Herbalist Lounge on YouTube. We'll give you that address later. So if there's anybody that you know missed the recording or there's a part that you missed, then you'll be able to go to YouTube and, and pull it back up. So usually our discussions are about one hour in length. All right, we want to take a quick moment to introduce everybody. So Martina, I'm gonna let you go first. Peace y'all, it's Martina, AKA Mama Okra. And that's me right there standing next to that beautiful plant ally, which we probably will be talking about tonight. So. Peace, y'all. I'm going to pass the mic over to the third person in the picture, Miss Lanita. Where you at? <laughs> here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, y'all. I'm here. I'm here. And I am the hibiscus. <laughs> I'm feeling some hibiscus tonight, too. I planted on Thursday. It's already up above the ground. Mm. So, Unlike the allergens, I'm doing well over here uh, most of the times, but I can't wait to get into this topic tonight. Throwing it over to you, Asia. All right. All right. Hello, I'm Asia. I am in the middle, if you're watching the slide presentation, holding the chicken. Um, and what Lanita just talked about, we'll get into that. So if you are new here, then what we do at the beginning of the Herbalist Lounge is we take a moment to allow everybody to introduce themselves and introduce what herb is representing them or what herb um, you're representing and where you from, who you at, who your mama them, all that. So anyway, please feel free to, to jump in. You can say it audibly, you can type it in the chat, whatever makes you feel comfortable, but Who's around? Where are you from? I'm Asia. I'm representing, now I'm representing Southern Illinois and the worldwide stage. And the herb that is resonating with me right now is spearmint. I'm always chewing on some spearmint, peppermint gum, but I'm growing spearmint right now, getting used to this new environment that I'm living in. And the spearmint is growing very well where I am. So spearmint is, is rocking with me. I'm rocking with it right now. Okay. Spearmint bringing in the new energy. I see you. All right. Um, let's see here. Ravonda, peace. Hello. Oh, peace. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jerry. Uh, Jerry Calhoun. I'm representing uh, a growing small farm, Heritage Farms in coastal Georgia. Uh, the herb I think that represent me is uh, stevia. I'm learning how to use it and create teas and yeah. Okay. I got a, a yeah. He said, "Welcome." You said, "Jerry." Yes. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Thank yeah, you. welcome, Mary. All right. So we got stevia in the house tonight. What else? What other herbs we have? So Sharonda says yes to Lanita, our favorite tea. I'm guessing that's going to be on the hibiscus. <laughs> you know, that's the hibiscus for me. It's a, it's, I love hibiscus. So I'm going with hibiscus. I've been feeling it all weekend and today. So hibiscus and cloves and cinnamon today and a little elderberry. A little blend. <laughs> a little blend today. I need a little blend to keep me woke today. I feel you. I love it. All right. Sharonda coming through with the herbal blends. All right. 
Let's see here. We got Audrey, heavy on the nettles. Hey, okay. Nice. All right, peace, Clarissa. What's up, Herb Nerd? Clarissa says, I'm in Coventon, Georgia, which is 30 to 35 miles southeast of downtown Atlanta. Red raspberry leaf is rocking with me. The number, the woman's herb, okay? Hashtag the woman's herb. I'm spending a lot of time with this herb this month, learning more about all its powerful benefits, taking your advice. Oh, from Martina, well, what do you know? Taking 30 days to do one-on-one -on -one with this herb. Get it, let's go. All right, well, big up um, Clarissa. Represent, we got some people representing Georgia tonight. And of course, big up Red Raspberry Leaf, yay. <laughs> all right, Martina, what herb are you rocking with? Well, let's see. I got to go to my calendula. I'm making some calendula tea right now, y'all. Um, Yeah, big up the bitters tonight. Um, I just need some bitters in my life when it's time to just stay grounded. And whew, if y'all don't know, Martina likes the bitters. So, yep, that's what we're doing tonight. I'm about to strain this tea and sip on it as we have this discussion tonight. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Okay, I jumped ahead a slide, but... Okay, so now we're going to take a moment to honor our plant sisters, our ancestors, and those who came before us and paved the way for us to be here and to make the choices that we make. We're so grateful, and we want to say thank you. Ashe. 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 All right, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about allergies. Oh my goodness. So allergies can be annoying. They can be painful. They can just, you, it's just something that people just don't want to deal with, right? So <laughs> I have people on here, you know, these these two young ladies, they're they're sneezing, you know, they got, they got the tissue up to their nose, but um, allergies, what why why do allergies happen, y'all? What what causes allergies? What have y'all seen cause allergies? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Out here in Texas, uh, we have some a whole bunch of flowers. Thank you, Lady Bird Johnson, for mm -hmm. giving us the wildflowers. Um, but we have ragweed and we have a lot of other different allergy producing plants. And let me tell you, when those pollen little seeds fly off and get in your nose you sneezing your eyes are running you're itching you don't know what's hitting you and from which direction so the allergens for us here in this weather especially now that it's getting hot and it's raining a lot and a high winds so we got lots of stuff blowing around irritating everybody even people who normally don't suffer from allergies are suffering now because of the high winds and all of the rain Mm -hmm. okay and i see a lot of people in the chat are saying pollen and pollen yeah especially around this time huh mm -hmm. okay. and then, what do you think about asia what, what do you think about when you think about allergies or what causes them oh yeah i i agree with all of the above um, I'm trying not to go into the remedies. I'm just trying to stay with, <laughs> with, with the with the basic right now. Like what what causes them? Um, so definitely a buildup of all of it, right? Um, Lenita talked about the wind already, the wind blowing around. And this picture, one of these pictures, I chose because uh, the animals sometimes they pick up different things and then you're around them. And so it could be pollen that's on them. So there's, there's all different types. And then like, what I was going to ask the group is like, when you see allergies or when people are experiencing allergies, what type of symptoms do you see when they're experiencing those things or when you are? Coughing. Hay the fever, mm -hmm. shortness of breath. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shortness. I'm not laughing. Shortness of breath, watery eyes, itchy eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Headache, congestion. 
mucus, hives, yeah, stress. Rash, rash yep. So we're almost out of, like, the medium, there's, like, this much of a gap of that peak. Is there, like, is that okay? Or is, like, we're out of sweetener, too, to, like, bake more tea? Hang on just a sec. I can bring you the cup to so you can see it. Huh? Pardon. <laughs> just for a second. Yeah, poor sleep. So I love this um, because I'm looking at all these different things that are popping up and it's really just giving us like more insight to how we can use herbs to obviously help with symptoms. And then, you know, importantly to get to the root of it as well and help maintain it. So this, I love this start here. These are really good questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then Let's get into some plant allies. So we- Wait, wait, Asia, just yeah. before you get, go there, you have a, a, a four-legged in the picture and <laughs> I've met dogs that have allergies too. You know, um, uh, some dogs, they, um, different food allergies, uh, foods cause them allergens. Um, I have a dog allergic to grass and some are allergic to different things. So with pet allergies, you can see them either uh, with their skin, losing skin, or you can see them um, scratching their ears, you know, just crying because they're itching so bad. You're right, I live with one of them. <laughs> Audrey says her cat has seasonal allergies, yep. Lanita, I'm glad you brought it back to that too, because like in the herbalist lounge, we always talk about humans. We talk about animals. We talk about insects. We, of course, we talk about plants, obviously, but we we like to look around in our ecosystem and see how whatever we're talking about affects our whole ecosystem. So that that's a good point. Charnay Peace says, my dog has allergies and changed his diet to hill. Maybe humans have to do the same. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inside out as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would also say pesticides too, because when right now everything is growing, but even before that, or even during, so everything is growing and we have farmers trying to protect their crops and there's a lot of spraying happening. And so I think that that also causes allergic reactions and just reactions in general to uh, maybe some of the, the chemicals in the pesticides. Most definitely. When I think of allergies, I literally think about every single thing, like from the environment to foods, you know, um, out here, for example, they spray seasonally for mosquitoes and, you know, it's just adding more toxins into the environment. It's adding more toxins to the, to the air, to the water system. And when I think of allergies, I think about all the different, um, type parts of the, the bodily systems, like our mucous membranes, especially the ones like in our nose and, how a lot of the stuff starts there. And I think about the diet, the immune system, histamines, how our body um, gets rid of excess histamines. I know one thing with my youngest one who as an infant had severe eczema and just working with different herbs that worked with her, I just realized it was definitely a lot of external remedies, but also internal remedies as well. But it gets to a point where it's everything we just mentioned on this call from, it's like when the season, the pie pollen seasons come about, I have to keep my eyes open. When we move in different environments in the homes or visit places, I have to be very mindful because I notice when she gets to that point where she has a high amount of like those histamines in the body, we can do things through the diet um, to kind of bring them down. And when she gets around, say a cat, which she has an allergy to cats, she's not as um, affected by it as if she had like a high amount of these toxins in her or, or exposure. And I think that kind of goes for just us in general. So yeah, 
allergens I think about just all over but at the same time I don't like putting myself or her in a bubble we kind of expose ourselves to it to introduce the body to it at the same time and some things we're not trying to be exposed to though you know a lot of those um, high level toxins so you know those are just some initial thoughts mm -hmm. yeah that's good stuff Hey, Martina, one of the allergens that we haven't talked about, I think I just thought about it because of you. Uh, I remember when I was in school in the springtime, the girls want to be all cute and they wear them body sprays that smell like strawberries and, uh, you know, all the cream cheese and all them sweet perfumey stuff. And I couldn't even sit in class. I would be sneezing so hard. My eyes were watering just from the smells of those different body sprays that they wore. Yeah, those trigger headaches. And I'm telling you, um, for those who don't know, I'm I'm in the classroom teaching. I'm an educator. And my number one rule is do not spray those little those sprays. I don't care if it's an expensive spray, Calvin Klein, the new line, or if it's strawberries and cream from the Jollers Tree or whatever. I don't want to smell it. It drives me crazy. And I start opening up all the windows and I'm on the second floor and they're like, it's not safe. And I'm like, look, these histamines that are about to increase in this room aren't safe. So yes, Lanita, I agree. <laughs> uh, so I try to go with more natural tones to um, <laughs> the commercial voice. <laughs> so you trying to tell me the next time I see you, I can't wear my strawberry cheesecake. No, I'm sorry. Wear that, wear that lavender essential oil that you usually have. <laughs> but not too much, though, okay? I'm going to mix it. I'm going to mix it. <laughs> oh, cream cheese. Y'all are crazy. Oh. I'm need... Okay. Uh, where's... Okay, here we go. All right, y'all. So we, we talked a lot about all the different... Um, reactions that we have, um, what we think of when we hear the word allergy, what are some ways in which right now we are already using or what are some ways in which we recall maybe from our childhood and our family? What do we do with allergies? How can we um, help fight against allergies? What y'all doing in there, huh? Anyone have like a favorite herb or a favorite go-to or something they go to in the spice rack or even if it's not an herb, maybe it's just something like uh like steam or some type of water remedy. Cascara Sagrada. That's my go-to. Okay. Great. And how do you use it if you don't mind me asking? Do you make a tea from it or either a tea, a tea or, or take the pills? The, the vegan capsules. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Rosemary leaves and uh, lemon. And steaming. Steaming is good too with peppermint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Audrey says nettle and mullein tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mullen, it's amazing. All of these things are amazing. Charnay says a few drops of eucalyptus in a hot shower. Ooh, girl, yes. <laughs> that helps for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be ready to melt into the shower wall. Just, I'm done. <laughs> okay. What about you, Asia? Do you have anything in particular that you use for your particular seasonal or your allergy needs? You know, I I have been lucky. I'm going to knock on wood. I don't really experience allergies in the way that people, other people do. The only other time that I can really remember having an issue with allergies was when I was in South Carolina and it got just hot and humid and the pollen from the trees, this is before I was like into trees and herbs y'all, but there was this tree and round about this time, it should be out like just spraying the yellow pollen everywhere. So you have yellow pollen all over the cars, all over the streets, all over you. Like, so it was, it was hard to breathe number one with the humidity and then number two with the pollen. So it was a lot of 
water, drinking water. It was a lot of um, like taking showers and making sure like I had the stuff off of me and like off of like anything that I could really kind of get away from. So that was a help. And then um, that's right when I started like reading Queen of Fua. So it was more than about diet more so than anything else. So uh, when I say diet, because back what I was reading was closer to more of a raw food or like steamed food, like not overcooking your veggies and things like that, that type of diet and reducing dairy. So those, those were the things that I was into during that time in South Carolina. Definitely that queen of fool saved my life at that same time too with mm -hmm. the the queen of fool book with the um her supplement the spirulina mm, yes at one point i was it seemed like i was allergic to every food that i ate especially anything citrus mm. uh to anything with any kind of acid mm. and um that spirulina helped me to withdraw from all of the foods that I was allergic to and then start reintroducing things back into my diet so I could find out which ones I was allergic to. So that's very important when you find out that you have different food allergies. That's a good one. And she also had a, a product, she still has it, it's called Breath of Life and it is just a very strong minty, they're, they're drops, you can put them in your water. You can take it straight if you're brave enough or if you need it that much, but it will clear up everything. So yeah, good points, Lanita. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sharonda said, I just ordered that today. All right. Mm -hmm. And let's see, these are all really good points. I heard someone else also trying to speak. Roz, Jerry, mm -hmm. did you have something to say to add on? Uh, yes, definitely getting rid of the milk, egg, and cheese that rid your body of a lot of the mucus buildup, if that's a problem. Yes. Okay, thank you. For sure. And that's really big that you guys are bringing up like different types of foods because, you know, we all have different chemistries. There are some things that I would definitely suggest people just stay away from in general, like heavily processed foods. But for um, my young one, the foods is, is, was pretty much everything. Um, just knowing what type of foods to give her, food sensitivities, and just knowing yourself and and what foods um, are good for your body constitution, you know? And I do have a spirulina story. So when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I did take spirulina. It was something that um, was recommended by my midwife, who was also an herbalist. And it was just, oh my goodness, it was amazing. When I actually gave birth and I had my placenta, it the person who worked with my placenta at the time, my doula, was like, this is the brightest placenta. It's deep, dark, and red. And I I definitely um I definitely point that out to the spirulina, which was just really rich. Um, but you know, there's a lot of connections there. And one thing I noticed when I was drinking and taking the spirulina, especially like during breastfeeding, in addition to the foods I was eating, um, it just really helped also with, you know, in the womb with the, with the baby. And when Naya, my oldest did come out, she was, she's not as sensitive to a lot of foods and she, her palate, she was just more so to eat different types of foods, like bitter foods, for example, you know? Um, so I know we talk about like, I don't know if anyone's familiar with like epigenetics or, you know, what the mama does affects the womb yeah. and then also the age of the baby in the womb. You know what I mean? But that to me says a lot to allergies as well, because with my second, who's very has, I don't want to say she has, she's very allergic to things, but at the same time, she does have, um, we've been able to get it under control just through, you know, herbs and, and being mindful of the diet and working with our herbal allies. But I think about my second pregnancy, the environment that I was in, the foods that I was eating, and also my mental and state, which, you know, can add to being stressful or not as stressed, being peaceful, and how all that just affected, the, you know, our immune system. So I kind of look at the big picture, but I know it kind of went all over the place, but I just wanted to throw that in there and share it. 
thank you for sharing all the, yeah. the differences and the different experiences. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Clarissa put in the chat about raspberry leaf tea for eczema and also the tincture. So um, I'm wondering, oh, it says tightening and toning the skin. So uh, Clarissa, I was just curious as the, the tincture or the tea does that help to, um, what does that do for the skin? Or are you using it topically? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, we got you. We got you, Clarissa. We're holding on. <laughs> and, and we, oh, let's see. All right, so while we wait for Clarissa to answer that and take your time, no rush at all, I'm going to go ahead and read it. In addition to the raspberry leaf, which I do want to hear how you use the tincture or the tea, um, Clarissa also men mentions comfort leaf for itching, helping with pain, and even great for after giving birth to help heal the perineum, especially the area is itchy. Susan Hills keeps the tissues flexible, also great for making sits baths to soak in after birth. Um, Yes, most definitely. So we will definitely hear about that from Clarissa. I do like to use raspberry leaf tincture and also tea as well. Um, what I do, Lanita, is I take it internally because when I'm thinking about, um, you know, the tannins, the which gives it that very astringent property, I think about it, the tissues internally and externally. But you can do like a like a little warm bath. Sometimes I would do that with Nairobi. Not with just the, the raspberry leaf, but sometimes I would do it with something that's a little bit moistening as well, like marshmallow root or okra. I used to sometimes soak it with the okra. And you can also add a tincture to soaked okra where you get that gel-like consistency to do like a little wash on the skin. Um, so that's ways in which I used it externally and both internally. But yeah, I would love to hear from Clarissa as well to see how she is using good old um, raspberry leaf. Okay, I'm here, sorry. I had to get in the area <laughs> that, that was quiet. <laughs> um, so I've been doing a lot of reading about it and my daughter has eczema as well. Um, um, and so with her, we do both where she takes it internally and um, topically as well. Uh, usually what I'll do is just steep it and um, pour it in her bath water. That way she can just soak in the red raspberry leaf. And it really helps because when her eczema is really acting up and it's very inflamed, um, that red raspberry leaf really helps um, help calm her um, flare ups down. So that's what I use it for. I, I thought about also um, talking to you, Martina, about a salve, um, perhaps trying it that way too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, too, yeah. It pairs the moistening with the astringent property. And I always think of like energetics when I'm doing herbs, especially when I'm, well, not doing herbs, but when I'm working with my herbal allies and also with whatever's going on, right? And, you know, with the eczema, it can get very dry, very itchy. You use the wrong moisturizer. It's, it, it's a wrap as well. Now you got another issue, right? Um, yes. And I think of temperature because sometimes with the eczema or not just eczema, but just allergic rashes in general, like out with allergies, if it's red and it looks really hot, one thing I, I love, the raspberry leaf is very cooling. Um, and that's why I like to pair it with moistening herbs or salve would be would be nice. A salve would be great. You can do like a, just an oil, an infused oil. My favorite oil to infuse is olive oil. It's the one oil that I find rarely goes rancid, although there's tons of other amazing oils that I would test out for myself or for yourself, depending on, you know, what resonates or what's good for your skin, right? And what part of the body you're going to use it on. But yeah, those balancing um, herbs are great. And also, Clarissa, I know I'm always talking about okra, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do use that as a bathing um, 
like because you know it's just like the aloe vera where it gives you that gel like mucilage um and i find it to pair very well with astringent herbs and you know it's very important for us to think about the skin the skin barriers um or whatnot just to kind of as a preventative measure some of my other favorite things for the skin for her like go to cola leaf that's another really good one you can do with salve from or compress and i think about circulation kind of getting that blood flow to it so internally maybe sometimes what i'll do is i'll always add my good old ginger root um or just something aromatic or something that's going to get things moving um to help balance out the the red raspberry leaf but it's just also good to get that stimulation going get that blood flow moving um to kind of help promote the healing as well so yeah that red that um someone mentioned rosemary already rosemary is amazing oh my gosh rosemary and red raspberry let's go yes martina you mentioned those, those hot rashes you know, in the summertime, you get a lot of hot rashes out where I live. We got a lot of poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac, and those rashes really itch in it. You know, they turn really red and your skin is really inflamed. Um, and it's the oil in that that causes that spreads that rash. So for those type rashes, um, I like using bentonite clay and nettles, uh, using the nettles. Uh, making an infusion of the nettles and making the bentonite clay into a paste and putting it on those hot rashes. Um, and you can put a little, little peppermint essential oil in there. Peppermint essential oil really helps with itching and with pain. So uh, the bentonite clay dries up that rash. It takes the heat out of it. It cools it. And then that um, the nettles is actually an antihistamine, even though it causes a histamine reaction, it is an antihistamine. So it stops your skin from being so reactive to that poison ivy or, or poison oak or whatever. And um, that bentonite clay will dry it up really quick. And then the peppermint just helps to soothe the skin while you're going through the process. Mm hmm you know I'm co-signing on that, Lanita, all day. <laughs> I'm, I'm your number one fan for many reasons. Um, I got to give the two reasons. So while on Blackland Ranch, where Lanita um, resides, that beautiful piece of land, let's see, I was exposed to what, poison ivy? <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't have a reaction. That's a different story. But I also <laughs> had a, horn, a wasp bite right on the center of my forehead, right? <laughs> um. And who knows what else, but everything was taken care of herbally um, by my herbalist, Lanita. So I was in good hands. But to add on to that, one of my, the best remedies that I ever had um, was, it blessed me, right? <laughs> was like, welcome to the land. I'm going to tell you all this, though. When I was, um, after my second daughter and I was in my postpartum phase, um, you know, first time mommy, if more than one child, two children, and then, you know, my big one's wanting the attention and just balancing that out. And my little one has serious eczema. It was to the point where like, we're wrapping her legs and the different compresses and everything. It was just, it was a lot of stress, you know, it added on to the postpartum period for sure. But Lanita actually helped with an external remedy. She mentions the bentonite clay. So in the bentonite clay, she created this remedy with some different herbs. Like one of them, I, the itch, she made an itch um, powder and I believe it has the bentonite clay. It has like the nettles. Lanita, go ahead and add in if you want to tell what else is in there. Um, but that, in addition to one other remedy that I started using, which was a combination of bentonite clay with mimosa, um, albizia. Albizia, which is happy happiness tree, has those beautiful pink blooms. The blooms are known to be um, helpful for like um, just mental upliftment. But... The bark also has an affinity for the skin. And that powder in combination with the bentonite clay, I would make like a small little paste with some of the nettles powder. And I'm telling you, I would put that on the area and it would just clear it up overnight. Um, and I'm saying this because you know how like when you're exhausted and you're tired and you're going through things and you're, you're they're the caretaker for somebody else. And when something works and you're making progress, like I'm telling you, oh, that was the best feeling ever. 
So definitely the clay in combination with other herbs, you can use it in powdered form, um, work very well. Once again, everybody's different. So, you know, always test it out as well. You don't want to worsen the condition, but I have had um, great results. Thank you, Lanita. Thank you, Mimosa Tree Bark. Thank you, Nettles and um, Bentonite Clay. Mm -hmm. Just an FYI, you know that DMT is com comes from the mimosa, right? <laughs> I sure do. That probably helped as well. Woohoo! No. <laughs> uh, you don't use it's an help. amazing tree. It's an amazing tree. <laughs> so, has all kinds of uses, right? From the root to the tip of the leaf and the blooms. Come on now. You made me think about something, and that's why I put oats on here. Um, when I was younger, probably 10 or under, probably between the ages of six and 10. Um, I had really, really bad skin rashes and it was more like eczema. And my mother, she was taking me to all kinds of doctors and they were prescribing all types of creams and things. And then no, nobody ever said anything about diet. So it is what it is at this point. But I had, she took me to a doctor, she was Indian and she didn't prescribe any cream. She basically told my mom, she prescribed colloidal, colloidal oatmeal. That's why I have oats up there. And all that is, is just, just oats, not instant oats, just the raw oats. They could be hulled or shelled or what have you. And then you can take that and either you grind it up or you can blend it up in the blender to where it makes a powder and you can put that in the bath. And then also she told my mom to use olive oil instead of all those different lotions with the scents and things in them. So that really did help too. And later on in life, I found out like coconut oil really helped, uh, especially when I went to, when I moved to California, cause the water was just hard. And I, I was not used to, you know, coming from Hawaii my skin was fine. Everything was good. It was humid. Everything was moisturized. Then I went to California and I don't know what was in the pipes and the water, but my skin and my hair just like went crazy. So coconut oil helped to balance that as well. Yes. Coconut oil helps so much in my household. It helps, like, it's the one thing I use, Asia, like, say, for example, I have some type of rash or maybe, like, acne, which I don't really get as much as I did when I was younger, but um, same thing with my young, with my youngest, I use coconut oil, it, it clears it up, um, so it, coconut oil, coconut oil works for me as well, and yes, paying attention to those different environments, right, I'm in Florida, super humid, but going to California, it's like a whole other situation. So just being mindful as you travel in the environment, that's so true. Mm -hmm. And then something else y'all were talking about earlier, like with the heat and the rashes and um, all the um, poison, poison plants, all those different things. Just thinking about, even if we're thinking about like water and like bath time and cleansing things, then we, we also want to look at the temperature of the water that we're using because sometimes hot water can further aggravate hot situations. So you want to balance that out with like cool water, lukewarm, just so you know, you're not causing further inflammation in the area. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Hey, uh, Asia, you were talking about uh, warm water and things of that. I just thought about that. Um, here in the, uh, it's so hot and you sweat a lot. And for those of us that are ample, that have uh, skin that creases over, <laughs> sometimes you get <laughs> rashes in the folds, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was curious as to some people's remedies for heat rashes. I know, um, especially if I'm out cutting grass and I get real hot in my neck, if I rub my neck, I'm going to have a terrible heat rash. It's like I got sunburn heat rash all together and it's very irritating. I was curious as to if people had any remedies for those, you know, fold rashes, the rashes you get in between skin folds or just heat rash, you know, in general. 
Yeah. See, okay, Audrey. Yeah, thank you. There you go. So I was about to say mm -hmm. the starch definitely helps to absorb all mm -hmm. of that water and that sweat. Um, and it kind of keeps you cool. So cornstarch, we used to use that as deodorant as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and that's why, you know, before these commercial powders came and, you know, has since wreaked havoc. But that's definitely what Big Mama and them use is that cornstarch. Seems like a lot of people like that in the chat too. So that must be the remedy then. Cornstarch. Okay. Thanks. Like you just said, that's what Big Mama said, Lenita. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I mean, clinical study. Big Mama said it, period. <laughs> I love it. Where I grew up is Miss Granny. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see, some of the things on the picture, if you can see the slideshow, some of the other things we included were just definitely the, the point here was looking for histamine blockers. Um, so when you look at the, you have the middle picture with the turmeric and the ginger and the cinnamon, and then also somebody already mentioned rosemary. Down in the corner, I, I put black seed. I was doing some research. I haven't used it, but uh, black seed oil was recommended to assist with histamine responses to help to bring that down and to help to clear the passageways uh, through the like the bronchial areas. And then we mentioned nettles and then also the, the garlic and the onions, all your alliums help to really open pathways again and to, to clear some of like the excess mucus because it can draw on those type of things and to bring that out of the body. And you know, Dr. Turtle used to say that the same thing that causes it can also be the cure. Mm -hmm. And I found that a lot with some of the allergens here, like plantain, nettles, and there's one plant particularly called sneezeweed. It's in the ragweed family. And, oh, we have so much of that. But the Native Americans used to take that sneezeweed, dry it, powder it, and they would put it in their nose like a snuff to make them sneeze, literally. And that way you would blow the pollen out of your nose that sticks to the little hairs in your nose, especially when in the heat your nose gets so dry. Um, you'd make yourself sneeze and you would rid yourself of the allergens. Um, and that's the, the sneeze weed itself was the remedy, even though it's a ragweed. So many times the things that causes the problem can cure the problem. And then also, you know, it can work both ways with the foods that we eat. There's, I know I have an aunt who's allergic to shellfish just flares up so what she does she just kind of is mindful of like high histamine foods versus the low histamine foods and you know kind of keeps a watch on that but that's also something just to be mindful of um we we've been talking a lot about diet tonight or just like the foods that we eat and one thing that I always found was that was interesting was that excess histamines are processed in the gut so some of my favorite herbs y'all know are bitters, um, bitter herbs and bitter herbs are excellent for all type of allergy symptoms, just for the simple fact that it kind of gets that, that heavy load from all those symptoms and all that, all of those chemicals, the immune system puts out for, to, as the body's first line of defense. Right. Um, but calendula has an affinity to the skin and it helps with mood stagnation and, um, can be beneficial for like rashes and a poultice externally, but it's also a very bitter tea and not just calendula, but just all kinds of bitters. I find that just having my, um, myself and my children, my family, we, you know, we keep our bitters in y'all make fun of me for lo loving the bitters all the time, but I have found that it helps out so much. Just, um, I see a correlation between when we're drinking our bitters, of course, in combination with, all other tastes and flavors, right? It really does help um, with with 
keeping us not as susceptible to having uh, allergies or allergic reactions, if that makes sense. So yeah, big up the bitters. It just increases that bile and it increases enzymes and enzymes actually help break down those histamines. Um, and the histamines exit our body through that way and then also through the urine. So making sure we have a heavy, I mean, a healthy flow in the body is also very important. I think that brother said earlier that uh, he liked Cascara Sagrada and that's another one that helps cleanses all of the things that hang around in your body that can become allergens. Uh, you know, cleansing your system, that's one of the main tenets of, of uh, Ayurveda, uh, the Panchakarma, cleansing the body. So seasonal cleansing is very good. And Cascara is another one that, you know, helps cleanse everything out. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sis. <laughs> Absolutely. If it's bitter to the taste, it's sweet for the body. If it's sweet to the taste, it may be bitter for the body. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no problem with bitters over here. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> hey, y'all, I got me a bitter brother now. What up? <laughs> <laughs> They always be making fun, not making fun of me, but, you know, I may overdo the bitters a little bit, but hey, look, you know, shoot. Matter of fact, I'm about to go in the kitchen now and strain out this calendula tea. Maybe I'll add some gentian root to it, um, Asia. (laughs) (laughs) Martina, we were using one of your remedies last night. Actually, it was you and Asia's. It was from the rooted box. I still has some uh, lemongrass and some elderflowers. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Out here with the runny nose, that snotty nose, (laughs) that elderflower will dry it up. And the lemongrass just, Yes, that right there is perfect, people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I heard someone say elderberry tonight. And, you know, I love elderberry. We have elder trees on the land. I've grown up with elder. I've had a long relationship with elder trees. Love them. And I always talk about the flowers, the flowers. It's always elderberry, elderberry, which elderberry is amazing. Before the berry comes, it's the flower. And I'm going to tell y'all, that's another herb that has saved me time and time again. Then I, I feel like I'm going to sound like a commercial right now, but like real talk, when it comes to help modulating um fever, and you know, that can be very stressful, especially if you have a young child or just anybody and your fever starts going up 102, 103, 104, 105, um, I've worked with a lot of different things, of course, um, but I'm telling you, elderflower, an elderflower bath, and if you can drink the tea internally, does amazing with that. And also, it has an affinity for like the that sinus, you know, when you have that runny, drippy um, nose, elder, elderflowers. And it does have a lot of pollens in there, but those pollens can be very beneficial um, for you in many different ways, so... Yeah, um, pick up the elderflower and yes, lemongrass. Ooh, you know, lemongrass is also called fever grass in Jamaica, and that's funny because you know, I use elderflower a lot when it comes to like bringing to it's a very cooling herb. Um, but lemongrass is also great for that as well because a fever can be another reaction to something, the body's trying to get rid of something and balance itself out. So we kind of work with with the fever to kind of rid the body of what's going on. Like Lanita said, got to do that deep system cleaning. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this is bitter, y'all, and it tastes so good. And, and the calendula petals just like float to the top, so it gives it like a little texture as I sip on it. Mm. Take a sip for me. <laughs> yeah, I took two of them for you, okay? Look, I'm a little bitter about bitters, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm going to make you some lavender bitters. Don't worry. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> it <won't get> you. <laughs> and, you know, not everybody for... can. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said put a little stevia in it for. Thank we'll you. Do... We'll put a little sprinkle, sprinkle in there. You know, sprinkle. Thank you, brother. <laughs> 
So I do have a question for um, Ross Jerry. Are, if you don't mind, are you growing the stevia? Yes, it's one of the plants I'm experimenting with right now. I would and love to hear when about we was, When we were doing the introductions, that's the plant I was dealing with. So okay. that's the plant that came up. Cool. If you ever come to an herbalist lounge again, we would love to hear how it's going, um, which I hope to have you. We hope to have you again. Because I tried to grow stevia at one point. I'm in Florida, so um, I'm not going to say I didn't have any success because I, after my initial try, didn't really try again. So, you know, maybe there's an issue, right? But definitely going to try to get some growing again. Definitely. Sun, soil, and water. Uh, Mother Nature do a lot of it, but check the pH levels. Make sure it's at a about a 6.5 to 7, and just give it worm castings and cow manure. It'll do good. Okay, that's awesome. Well, Where are you growing at? What's the temperature that you're in? Where are you? Uh, I'm in coastal Georgia, just above okay. the Florida-Georgia line. Okay. It, it's a temperate climate. It, it does get cold, though. Mm. But for y'all that are uh, timid on the bitters like I am, Martina also makes bitter sprays. And that's the only way that I could take those bitters. I can spray them on my tongue and, you know, eat it down with something else. But they work amazingly. So just know you don't have to be a bitter buddy to <laughs> enjoy <laughs> the benefits of the bitters. <laughs> you don't have to be a grumpy smurf, <laughs> Lanita. <laughs> so, so you have someone, wait. Ross Jerry, you have your song, well, your little saying about bitters. Asia, I'm going to go ahead and have to say it. So, bitters for your liver and your nervous system, too. Everything's connected. You know how Mother Nature do. Ooh, I added a little ooh in there. That's the remix. Um, But, that's like, it. that's it. You like that, right? Album's dropping, y'all. Y'all want to get on. Let's do this collaboration. Herbalist Lounge. <laughs> but one thing that I really like to do with bitters is combine it with warming herbs, um, aromatic herbs, and that really kind of helps balance off the synergy of it because you do have to be careful with bitters. And of course, I've experienced it. You know, there's always another side. You can, you know, not take enough bitters and there can be an excessive amount of bitters. You know, bitters are definitely going to increase the water internally, locally, like in the liver, all that bile moving, those enzymes, got the digestive juices flowing. It helps, you know, remove the water and just fluids from the body but what ends up happening you can get very dried out as well right um so i love to energetically combine bitter herbs which are very cooling with herbs that are warming and stimulating and um sialogogs which help promote the saliva on the tongue when i then my favorite warming herbs are culinary herbs like ginger um Think about just anything aromatic, lemongrass. So, you know, you can just do all kinds of things. And that's a nice combo that'll definitely get those fluids flowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like my bitter straight, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, we talked about the, the, the critters, the bugs, the itchums, the seams, and the bite them, no seams, and the bite them. No, let's talk about it. Let's talk about <laughs> the triggers and triggers, some creepy crawling triggers, things like that that creep me out, things that get in your skin. Anybody have any remedies or, or insight on that? Because, whoo, tomato juice, huh? tomato paste, tomato juice. <laughs> Really? Citronella plants. Huh? Citronella plants. Citronella. Citron yes, like on your porch and around your house. It keeps the mosquitoes, nets, and stuff like that away. You know, um, the citronella works good. I found any of the lemony scented plants work really well because I have citronella on one side, lemon balm on the other side, and lemon verbena is really strong too. So any of those lemony scented plants, they do really good for, especially, you You know, you sit on the porch and all the mosquitoes want to buzz around you at night in the evening time, mosquito dirty. Um, having those plants in your flower beds or around your porch really keeps those mosquitoes down. 
you know, one of my favorite herbs for like insect bites and things like that is plantain. Good old plantain. Um, and you can just find it pretty much everywhere you go, whether it's broadleaf or narrow leaf plantain. Um, it's such a wonderful herb. But yeah, plantain, witch hazel. I know up north in the northeast, I saw more witch hazel trees or shrubs than I did down here in Florida. I don't really see them that often. But and also lavender. Good old lavender, Asia, right? Um mm -hmm. stings and stuff like that. Yeah, that'll stop the histamine response as well. So a lot of those astringent herbs, uh, even like all your green teas, your black teas, your white teas, um, those will help to stop those histamine responses and localize whatever it is that's happening. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Tea bags. I want to dispel a myth about chiggers. A lot of people think that chiggers are the gift that keep on giving. They think that the chiggers burrow into your skin and they keep biting you or they keep going. But it's not that. It's that the chiggers, like if you walk through tall grass, the chiggers, unfortunately, are very cruel animals and they like to get around folds. Like they like to get around your underwear, your socks, in the creases and folds in your skin. So behind your knees and areas like that, the chiggers will get there and then they bite you and people think that they keep biting you because the itch gets worse as it goes on. It's not. They inject something in you and what they inject, if you don't clean it off as soon as you walk through there, it, it increases the histamine reaction and you get those... Mm -mm. I think we lost her, Lanita. But but yeah, so yeah, okay. there you go. Can you hear us? Oops, sorry. Hello, can y'all hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. It, I'm back. Okay. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So with the, the chigger bites, the best thing to do is if you walk through in areas where there may be chiggers immediately as soon as you get out of it take a hot shower and scrub your skin down really well and even if the chiggers did bite you you won't have that terrible two three week itching reaction that you get from chiggers so you can stop that you can nip it in the bud immediately if you get that off of your skin but if you don't that itch can last for two weeks and it is really bothersome well thank you for that yeah my mom a sugarologist let me tell you she my, will tell you about that my mom she i think chiggers are like her spirit insect <laughs> um, so it's like she can just like go outside for a minute and she's like you know they on her so it was just like um what was it last summer the summer before she she really started to get into gardening. So now, you know, she has all the stuff in her backyard and she is helping with the plots at her church and all kinds of stuff, just gardening everywhere. So anyway, once again, in Texas, lots of chiggers. And so initially she was like, uh, and I have to bring that back to her, Lenita, but initially she was like, yeah, they got me. And I was like, okay, try lavender. And it calmed it down a little bit, like, initially when you drop the lavender on there it would stop but then it would start back up again and so she went to the doctor they gave creams and it was like it, it would stop but it would start again and so then somebody finally that's why I said like tomato sauce tomato paste um and I, I believe it's because of the acid in there and so that is what she will use if the chiggers like really get to it because it'll it'll get behind her knees, you know. Um, so she'll she'll use that and it stops. Uh, when here, I was told to use Doctor Tish Tishner's mouthwash mm. because it has the highest amount of alcohol, and that alcohol dries it up. But that same remedy with the bentonite clay, the nettles or plantains and uh, peppermint essential oil that will help to dry up the chigger bite and the peppermint eases the itching irritation while you're using that 
I'm not playing over here. <laughs> I'm skipping you this. Made the moonshine. Asia, Asia, I'm skipping the spaghetti sauce and I'm going straight to the moonshine. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just get the creepy crawlies just thinking about it, y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't stop. <sighs> Too funny. Okay. So <laughs> we long now. We added some other things uh, along with allergies. So definitely. Filters. Remember, we talked about, so Lanita talked about seasonal cleansing. So that also means your house and your environment and getting out those old things and things that have collected dust, dusting them off, getting them out the house, refreshing the house. And, you know, those, the filters are really, really big parts. So filters in the car, filters in the house, filters wherever else you, you dwell that really does help because in, it, it is inevitable. Every time I change the filter, I, I go on a sneezing fit because of everything that's in there. So um, that's what you just said is everything, Asia. Um, like the car, mm -hmm. like, ooh, that was a big allergy on, on wheels, like literally. Um, and you just think about, especially with me, I have a lot of plants that I transport. I'm back and forth to the garden and soil. Like my car has all kinds of stuff in it. Um, and then even sometimes if I pick up my dad, um, they have a cat in their household. So just, you know, how cat hair just attaches to everything, even when you don't have a cat. But yeah, just cleaning those environments and, and air filters, air filtration in my home, um, in the children's bedroom, my bedroom, just proper ventilation, everything you just said has significantly helped with um, just the way that, especially my daughter, how she responds um, to allergies. So that's a really good point. And don't forget the carpet. Yes. Or throw rugs. Goodness. That's why I love hardwood floors because let me tell you, whenever I travel, I have to get a place that has hardwood just because carpet's hard, you know? It has so many chemicals in it. You spill stuff. It's not like you can just sh wash it and shampoo it like clothes and rinse it out and wring it out like you want to. But um, that's a really good point. Keeping those carpets clean. Yeah, because, yeah, carpets. Ooh, you could just. And a lot of carpet people have chemicals. So it's always like trying to find like a natural, someone that uses like gentle um, chemicals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what big mama said y'all oh and you're talking about uh chemicals i have a great ant remedy if any of y'all have uh problems with ants we have the ants when it gets real dry here then the ants try to come inside um so you can do um five parts cornmeal one part uh boric acid and that will, you can sprinkle that. If you have ant beds outside, you can sprinkle that in the ant beds. And then once they get dry, the ants won't come back. They kill the queen and they just don't come back. If you have ants in your house, you can make the, I call them ant cookies. And it's just flour with sugar and borax, the washing detergent borax, or you could use boric acid. And you don't cook it or anything. You just make like a dough with it. And you roll these little cookies out and you put them in your cabinet on the counters where the, you see this line of ants coming into your house. Yep. And then um, another thing is if you just see, you know, just a one-time thing, you know, you have kids or something, they drop something, and the next thing you know, you, you see a line of ants coming to them. If you mix um, essential pe peppermint essential oil with water, or vinegar and you spray the line that they've come on, the ants can't find their way back in. Um, that gets rid of the scent. So that'll, you know, get the ants out if it's just a one-time deal. But the others, if you know, you see them and they keep coming, then you can kill them with the uh, boric acid, with, with the ant cookies or the cornmeal and boric acid. That's good stuff. You know, that Back to the recipes of death, y'all, for those insects. <laughs> no big death cookie. 
I just laughed when it was like, don't need to bake it. <laughs> and you just remind me, if, if y'all didn't get a chance to check out the last Herbalist Lounge, oh my gosh, it was all, we went in on that. So, so much good stuff. And it's, it's amazing to see how all this stuff is just tied together, you know, how everything's interrelated once again, even how our bodily systems and the healing's interrelated, even those toxins and the bad stuff is interrelated. So, yes, Clarissa. So... Even, well, I have one more thing to say about that. I just thought about like, um, like with seasonal cleaning, even because mm -hmm. like I'll have like a linen closet. And so sometimes I have favorite blankets. And so then you have the blankets that just sit there <laughs> and you never take them out. <laughs> so even that stuff, like taking it seasonally or a couple of times a year, the stuff that you don't use, but you you'll need it for later. Um, if you either like package it up or you're, if it's out in the air, then taking it and washing it and making sure all that stuff is refreshed is, is good. Very true. Mm -hmm. So always, you know, we always talk about the seasonal or excuse me, the local honeys that can help. So a little bit of, um, what is it? A little bit of the pollen from the local area can also help with allergies to pollen. I think we already talked about apple cider vinegar. I think Lanita said something about apple cider vinegar already. But Asia, would you um, reiterate how that apple cider vinegar works? Like for people that don't want to do tinctures with alcohol mm -hmm. or making something for children, um, relate how that apple cider vinegar you can substitute the alcohol for the the apple cider vinegar for the alcohol mm -hmm. so yeah you can actually so you can use it internally and externally with apple cider vinegar so like if you wanted to make like a nettles type of vinegar then instead of infusing alcohol you would use vinegar instead so it won't last as long as an alcohol-based tincture. So typically if I'm mixing something with vinegar, I'm not going to mix as much because when I use alcohol, I like to use those huge mason jars, right? Anyway, so you, you would mix that and then you can give that to the children. You can uh, put it in a blend. You can put that in water, just like and you would just use it like any other tincture, but that helps to remove the alcohol for people who have alcohol sensitivities or people who uh, don't want to drink. They don't want to partake in it at all. And then, of course, uh, obviously children or even if you have people that are on medications where alcohol might interfere with that. Um, so it's, it's really a good um, um, remedy for that, for, for anything else that you're trying to do, a good alternative. So also with using it externally, there was a product that I used to make and I would sell it. And basically it was, it was apple cider vinegar and you would take all those, those good aromatic herbs. So, and the ones that were nice for the skin too. So it was lavender, some alfalfa. So that was excellent for the hair. Anybody that had locks, you know, for the hair and the scalp and the skin. Um, and that might have been most of what I used. And then I put a few drops of lavender essential oil and some other essential oils, depending on what the person was looking for. You could put some peppermint in there. And you can just, you could take a cup of that, put in some bath water, or you can use it as a rinse after a shampoo or after a conditioner. And you can either leave it because the smell of vinegar disappears unless you get your hair wet again. And then you can either rinse it out or keep it, like I said. And really it does help to close the cuticles of the hair and uh, the skin and the scalp. And for the hair, it helps to impart a sheen. But uh, I, really, I really like apple cider vinegar for different things internally and externally. It's really good. <laughs> uh, Ajiba says she heard of combing apple cider vinegar and baking soda in the hair and I'm just seeing a volcano on your head yeah but it <laughs> works though it gets it clear 
<laughs> but yeah, it will it will clear, especially if if someone has dreads or locks. Mm -hmm. If you have thick locks and so some people they don't have a good habit of making sure that the shampoo or uh, even if you're using conditioner is fully locked or excuse me, fully washed out of locks. So then doing combining those two and just rinsing like at least three rinses, at least three, passing it through, letting your, your dreads or your locks sit in the solution helps to really clear out any buildup that's there. <laughs> yes, I'm going to take y'all's word for it because that's what I clean my drains with. I'm not fixing to put that on my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And a couple other things. Uh, somebody mentioned lemon, lemon water or just water to help in, to help release the buildup. And we already talked about releasing histamines through the urine, helping to get those things out. Uh, we talked about coconut oil. And I don't think we outright said it, but definitely neti pots along with steaming uh, to help to clear up and to relieve some of the congestion and the sinuses, other good things that you can use. I swear by that neti pot. And then sometimes that saline can dry your nose out too much. If it does, instead of putting that normal saline ointment in your nose, put ghee. Um, especially a lot of times if, if people have really bad allergies and they're taking antihistamines, the antihistamine can dry you out too much. But that ghee is the best thing you can put in your nose and actually on swollen eyes. Put some ghee on your eyes before you go to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, your eyes feel so refreshed. Look, some of my head said, well, let's just go to sleep then right now. Let's do it. <laughs> Don't put that geek on your eyes. <laughs> All, right. All right. So do we have anything else that we wanted to add to allies that helps us to move through this season with the allergies and the environmental things. Uh, I would like to say that uh, most of your allergies and diseases is the body's reaction to its environment. So, when you change what you put into your body, your body won't react the same way. Uh, all the buildup, the, the toxicity, the pesticides, the herbs, the fertilizers, all that builds up within your body and you have to detox it. Um, the buildup of milk, egg, and cheese, that adds mucus to the body. The more you rid yourself of these things and only put in nutrients to your body, things will start to regulate and balance out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True mm -hmm. indeed. You're right. And you know, a lot of times it's trial and error too. You it's process of elimination. Sometimes you have to take your diet all the way down to water and just add in things one at a time until you find out which one makes you react. Yep. Lastly, anybody got any tick remedies besides fire? Experiment oil. Mm. Experiment oil? You can put that. Yes. You mean it, just uh, put it on your skin if you have a tick on there and it'll it'll come out? It'll retract itself. There's something about the experiment they can't take and it'll automatically retract itself out of your skin. Thank you. You're welcome. I like to do garlic oil, Anita. 
and you just rub it on the skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like spearmint too to help with, you know, antibacterial, you know, any type of prevention. You know. Mm-hmm. I think I smell a little bit better with the spearmint though. <laughs> hey. That garlic though, I'm telling you. How about garlic and spearmint combined? There you go. All right, there we go. I like that. <laughs> Spray that on your crops. That's a good pesticide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shoot, I don't. If you got ticks in you, I don't think you're gonna be like, I don't, I'm gonna smell like garlic. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my goodness! I love That's it. That's how you know who your true friends are. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know when you find a tick on you. you- like how dare you get out you know that tick the burled into your skin and it's like well so yeah you're right the, the smell of the garlic would be the least of the problems mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. so we are going to move forward all right so here's that youtube channel that i mentioned earlier so again, if you want to run this back and if you missed a point or anything like that, we will post the Herbalist Lounge recording, I think next Sunday, I believe it is. So then you can always pull it from there. You can share and we'll also share it as well. Thank you, Clarissa. Yep. So we have a YouTube channel. We have about four videos up now. So Go to YouTube and visit us at Herbalist Lounge and then subscribe and share. And we're also, we're posting, so in addition to the Herbalist Lounge videos, we are also posting informational herbal videos uh, just because we like to and it's fun. So (laughs) (laughs) So accurate. Thank you. Yay. All right. Uh, Ajaba. Yes. Okay. Ajaba, would you like to talk about this one? Hello. Hello. Hey. Like you can see me. This is my uncle. I just met my great uncle, my great uncle Melvin. Say hello to everybody. Who's that? This is everybody. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yes, <laughs> uncle. Yeah, he's telling me some great stories about different um uh bushes and things and herbs and whatnot from Jamaica. Yeah. Oh, we would love to speak to you about those things, Uncle. You hear them? She said her name's Asia. She says she wants to hear what you have to say about the bis- the busy tea on the farm and things like that. Well, and the I different think, herbs. Different herbs? It well, was, you know, yeah, well, you know. Well, the herbs are there, all these from day one, you know, that's where they take herbs and make all these medication. Yeah. All, yeah, all medication come from herbs. Yeah. Yeah, and they cut on it with chemical. Yeah. That's how you take this straight herb, it's better. More than to take all some type of medication. Yeah. You know, so it's hard to find people to blend all these herbs you know different herb together mm-hmm. this is what they do yeah man it's good all of them here that's what they do oh yeah yeah herbs is good man yeah man you know even the the green uh, go on uh, marijuana marijuana make the best tea man make the best he said marijuana make the best tea <laughs> i agree I thank agree. you uncle the green yes. one. yeah the green one yeah he's 80. yeah man yeah, exactly. it's wonderful you. stories. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. They say thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, my name's Ajaba. For those that don't know me, I am one of the moderators for the Black Doula Collective, and I'm partnering up with another birth keeper and doula. Her name is Jasmine Johnson, and we're having a watch party for this uh, short documentary called Bone Black Midwives Versus the South. And um, it was produced by the Queen Collective, which is um, a collective by Queen Latifah that supports both uh, uh, Black women and non-binary persons in the creative industry. 
Um, you can currently watch it on, I think, BT Her Plus, but we decided to put together a watch party for other birth workers or anyone else that is, you know, a Black person that's doing things for the community that might intersect with birth work, you know, so if you're a herbalist, you know, or just like a parent or just like a supporter of, you know, other birth workers and you'd like to come, please do. So it's being held on May 21st, uh, which is a Sunday afternoon. And yeah, basically, yeah, it's free. It's going to be on Zoom. So at the bottom of the flyer there, there is the meeting ID as well as the passcode. But if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook um, or Jasmine Johnson, uh, you can definitely get the details there as well. So thank you. I am sharing right now. Thank you, Ajaba. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ajaba, tell Uncle Melvin I want to talk to him about my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lanita, she says she wants to talk to you about her cookies. Because I, I think she makes marijuana cookies. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Good night, y'all. I can't. <laughs> well, marijuana, you know, uh, if you take it under, put ginger, pimento, saucy pillar, and you bury it for 21 days with white rum. Yeah. Is one of the best thing to cure sickness, man, especially belly pain. You hear that? That's an old country yeah. recipe right there from Jamaica. Put that in the chat. Yes, put that in the chat. I love it. Thank Boy. you. Yeah, <laughs> yes, white rum. Always white rum. White yeah, rum. I got the white rum over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so but he I says they for the old way of fermenting stuff is not in the closet, but bare, right. buried right. in the earth. Um, 21 yeah, days. like for 21 days. Yeah, same way they do kimchi. But didn't he say pimento too? Didn't he put some he pepper said, in that? Pimento seed. He said, he said mar marigoana. Green, <laughs> green marigoana. Pimento seed. Pimento seed. Ginger. Ginger. Sauce parilla. Sauce salsa parilla. And strong bark. And strong bark. Get us those things and mix it with white it's rum. A weed. It's a weed there, your meat there, your, uh, with the white rum. Mix it with the white rum and ferment it in the ground for 21 oh, days. You got English cough. You know, the cough, don't use, use it on a cough and rust. Use it kind of. Like use like an English rubber cork. I don't want the ones that rust. Yeah. And they bury it for 21 you days. bury it for 21 days. And when you're going to use it, now you're taking like a medicine, like a piece. Spoonful three times a day, man. Clean it out, make it strong, healthy. Yeah. Give it the color, come clear and nice. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that would cure COVID. That would cure COVID. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, but he knows, he told us my great grandfather, his father um, was an animal doctor and a birth worker as well. He delivered babies. He caught babies for both animals and people. So he brought, he's the, he's the last born of 12 children. And so he was brought around everywhere to see what my great grandfather was doing. My great grandfather did a lot of birth work um, and community based, like doing it for free for people back in Jamaica and uh, we said Lennox Big Woods. Yeah. So I don't speak with uh, no, that is, uh, West Moreland. In Westmoreland, so he oh. saw a lot of the work. So I said, "Oh, my great grandfather, I'm midwife." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I see, he was in the First World War, 1940 war. That's why I get all those uh, study for uh, animal doctor in the war. And for in those days, they mostly use horses and all those things. They need to fight the war. Yeah. You know, they have much uh, like say equipment. Yeah. World War One. You know, so. All right. So I have a question for y'all. Which part of Westmoreland? Uh, which part of Westmoreland? Lennox Bigwood. Which he said Lennox Bigwood and Savannah Lamar. That is the capital of Bigwood, of uh, Westmoreland. That's where my children's on um, on their dad's side. That's where um he's from. So Sav Lamar. Sav Lamar is a town. Yeah, that's where yeah. her father. That's where the her her children's father 
is from. Yeah, Salvador. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where your. Um, that's where my father is from. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where Vita from. That's where my grandmother is from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There are those kids born there right? in the uh, Salvador Hospital. Yeah. Ron, your dad, and all of you know. Yeah. Uh, that's where Jad was working. And where he I met, met, met Vita. And that's how he met. Oh, he, that's where my grandfather was working at the hospital, and then he met um my grandmother. Right. Who couldn't boil an egg for her life, apparently had to learn from my grandfather. But that's another story. <laughs> the next herbalist lounge, how to boil an egg. How yeah, to learn to yeah I it quite could be related to your kids, Bertine. I'm meeting all kinds of relatives over here. Look, man, we, that's the, exactly. <laughs> we'll have to chat more about it. So. Yeah. All right. They got to go. Say, say, ciao. Okay. Bye bye now. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Peace. Thank you so much. Thanks. Take Thank care. you, Uncle Melvin. Okay, there. Bye now. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. <laughs> oh, we love it. Thank you so much, Adriba, for sharing. Thank yeah. you for sharing. We love the elders. Okay, so I think pretty much everybody on here is subscribed to our MailChimp site, but if you're not, then definitely you can go to herbalist-lounge.mailchimpsites.com and it will take you to our landing page there. You can put in your email address and then we will send out a clickable link for you so you can join us live every second Monday of the month. All right, and I just said it, so we do this every second Monday of the month. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so join us, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if this is your first Herbalist Lounge, we thank you so much for coming. Come back again, you know when, and bring a friend. That's right. Peace, power, and green blessings. Blessings. Oh, no forget, no forget. Uh, put your contact information, whether it's social media, what have you, in the chat so we can share and we can follow each other because we are a community oh, yeah. and we love to spread the love and to share out in, in, in multiple platforms. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording and then we're going to play a little outgoing music for you. Peace, everyone. Peace.